Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. With us today, happy to have him back because he's got big news, is David Gandini, CEO at SoberSafe, the company trades in the U.S. on the stock symbol SOBR. For those who are new to the story, here's what you need to understand about them. As the name probably implies already as to what they're doing, workplace drinking uh, is at epidemic levels. Uh, here's the quote, commercial fleets suffer from over 11,000 alcohol-related accidents every year. That rate is climbing and technology has failed to keep pace with this epidemic. Some stats, 40, 47% of workplace injuries are linked to alcohol. Each injury, about $41,000 cost to employers, on and on. There's also the hidden cost of alcohol in the, in the U.S. economy. That's a $179 billion hit to productivity every year. Sober safe has a solution. They brought out the world's first touch-based solution to prevent alcohol-related accidents. Seeing is believing, so rather than trying to explain it, let's watch this video here for, for just one minute. Every driver on the road, every operator on the job, every pilot in the sky should be sober, period. Yet alcohol-related accident rates continue to climb and the technology has not kept pace with this epidemic until now. Business owners and insurance carriers alike recognize that preventive solution is needed now more than ever. SoberSafe is a disruptive new force in the market, a touch-based alcohol detector proudly built in the USA. So here's how it works. By simply placing a finger on a sensor, the user receives results in mere seconds. And temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure sensors calibrate each reading, ensuring both accuracy and consistency across applications and environments. Through our global cloud-based communications platform, managers receive immediate notification of test results our mission is to eliminate the destructive impact of alcohol on our roadways and workplaces. And with this disruptive solution, we are bringing safety to our communities with just the touch of a finger. Contact us to begin the conversation. Okay, now we're back. Now that you got a chance to see it, now you, now you got an idea of what we're talking about. The solution is far superior to the status quo, the primary competition being breathalyzers. Uh, the company is more than just lip service, already starting to commercially deliver. First of all, they have a successful uh, pilot program with an Amazon DSP. That's a delivery service partner. There are over 2,500 Amazon industrial contractors or fleets around the U.S., and that's, that's going to be one part of their market. But they're also uh, in revenue right now. They've got customers already and this is a total u.s market revenue opportunity of about 28 billion dollars the news the headline we're talking about today sober safe files to uplist stock to nasdaq hold 15 million dollar ipo david welcome back my friend thanks george i appreciate it a lot has happened since the last time we chatted so i'm excited to uh, get in conversation with you yeah it's great to see this technology really make headway it's not surprising but like all technology takes time and you're there before we talk about some of the specifics, how big of a problem are you solving? And more importantly, how disruptive is your technology? So good question, good, good place to start. So when we developed the technology, we noticed that there was no solution in the B2B space for alcohol detection or prevention. In the US, the blow device is probably the most significant and it's used in the offender space or it's used to penalize. So when we were developing our technology, we decided to focus around the B2B space to prevent workers when they come in, if they had alcohol in their system, to prevent those workers from getting in vehicles, from driving high lows, from working in, 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 in areas where there were high, high uh, safety issues. So what we did is we developed this device which detects alcohol. And what we do is we fit in between the employer policy for alcohol and the employee. So all we do is uniformly manage whether or not individuals have alcohol in their system. If we flag those individuals, then they just go and follow whatever the company protocol is for yeah. alcohol. Yeah, you're not judge and jury. You're just letting you're letting George Calm know, hey, Bob over here is uh, isn't sober right now. 
you put the alert up into my cloud, into my system, and what happens there all depends on my internal policies. Yeah, but, and George, more importantly, we've taken the human aspect out of it. So an individual doesn't have to make a decision or determination if somebody has alcohol in their system. It's flagged across the company uniform. The one thing about new technologies is a lot of times they sound great, but they struggle to find their market. They struggle to commercialize. But you guys are in revenue already. And, and, and this is before your June 20, 2022 full sale push. Uh, let's talk about that. What kind of what, what can you tell us? I know you're in a bit of a quiet period, but what can you tell us about the kinds of profile, uh, the kinds of customers you're going after and the typical profile, maybe? Yeah, so the $28 billion market that you've identified, uh, we'll build the sales mousetrap around that, which will drive, it'll really start with 257,000 last mile fleet companies that we'll be pinging through a, a, a third party appointment setting group and then into our own sales force. But what's happened is we quickly established a beachhead in the last mile fleet vertical because insurers stepped up and they were providing discounts for use the use of our device as a safety device. So wow. we walk through this. So what happens is if you're a fleet driver, you come in before you get your keys, you see in the video, you put your hand on our device and within eight to 10 seconds, it'll send us, it'll send that information to management or safety or, or HR within a company to flag you if you do or have, have alcohol in your system and you wouldn't be allowed then to get into workplace, you would be allowed to drive that vehicle. So we're creating a safer environment. Um. What's the feedback been like? Obviously, you've got customers already, and I, I'd want to, I'd love to push you to tell us more about how many, but I know you can't because you're in that kind of quasi quiet period. But maybe you can tell us all what kind of reaction are you getting from, you know, George Com Foods or whatever the case is when they see this technology and how it works and how helpful it could be to them. Yeah, so focusing on the last mile fleet, remember we've got these 47 percent of all drivers in the U.S. that. That, that have a, a, their alcohol related injuries and one out of every 10 vehicles on the on the roadway in the US, that individual has, has alcohol in their system and driving. So there's kind of a, here's the approach. The approach is we go into a customer, we talk about our device. Um, it is very disruptive in comparison to what the competition today is, which is the breathalyzer. But what we're really doing is by adding the insurance component as a safety discount, what we're doing is the employers are excited about building an overall safety culture, reducing their future liabilities, and creating a better environment and more productive environment inside their company. So everybody that we've talked to in the fleet side, in, in, in whether they're distribution, whether they're insurers, everybody is really excited and, and really creating energy and want to get on board with us around this space. I, I will say that as of this conversation, we have a signed agreement with a large insurer in the U.S., a top 100, that's putting our technology into two of their customers to determine how this data will, will the end result of the data when combined with actuarial data, will prevent against future liabilities within these companies. Well, OK, so let's switch to that gear then. Uh, when insurance companies, it sounds like, are potentially starting to love you, right? Uh, what kind of numbers are you hearing in terms of uh, you know, ROI on something like this or reduction or overall cost reduction? What, uh, what are you hearing? Yeah. So let's talk about the first uh, customer that we've signed significant customer uh, in the fleet space. That customer has 345 employees, 200 drivers. And what we'll do in that company is that the, as the drivers come in, They'll put their hand on the device, and as long as they're alcohol-free, they continue on with their daily work. And all, also the supporting cast and the warehousing space and the fulfillment space, all these in employees will check in. What this amounted to for this company is a total annual savings of $230,000, and then our cost was around $80,000 annually. So look at the the significant upside that, that, yeah, that the customer had, and the ROI was immediate. In fact, all the customers that we have signed right now are getting insurance discounts. They vary. So it's early in the process, but the insurers are on board. We've signed three super uh, broker agencies right now that they're bringing customers to us. So not only will we have sales or sales force, but we'll have this force multiplier with these super agencies and the insurance companies. And we're in conversation with a half a dozen right now 
to, to, to speed up this process, George. And, and you know, I was going to ask you, as you go into June 2022, as you, you know, which is just a couple months away, and you guys enter full sales, I was actually going to ask, what is your sales and marketing program? Because the good news is you have a massive market for this. The bad news is you have a massive market for this. Where do you start, right? So it sounds like you've already got a leg up because you've got George Com Insurance, who has hundreds of customers, and I'm saying, hey, you want to save money? We want to reduce our exposure as an insurance company. We're willing to reduce some of your insurance if you'll take a look at SoberSafe. How big of an advantage is that? Yeah, it, it, it's a significant advantage right now. And, and I'd like to, even though we're disruptive, the way I'd like to position us is we're being forced by the insurers and cr we're creating a whole new market. I mean, disruptive technology is one thing, but remember, we're a data company and we have these Trojan horse devices that are collecting this data and providing this data to the, the companies and those companies then boil that data down and send it to the insurers. So that's the path. In terms of sales and how we're gonna launch the, the mousetrap is we're raising money, we'll have the capital, probably by the time you're showing this video, we've got the capital and we're gonna deploy the sales mousetrap through the months of uh, end of April, May into June. And we expect to be in full traction, probably mid July timeframe with the appointment setters chasing the 257,000 last mile fleet companies with a very hyper focus on the 2,500 Amazon outsourced delivery service partners. So that is our strategy going forward. Well, let's talk about that. You actually had an insurance company who brought you uh, your first Amazon DSP pilot and DSP for people who don't know delivery service partner. So a lot of people don't know this, but you know, George, I could be a DSP for Amazon and say, Hey, I'll deliver packages for you guys around here. So leave them at a central location. But the problem with that is a, it's efficient because you're utilizing people, but the, you start to lose control. Right. And Amazon could have more liability if I turn out to be, you know, showing up uh, uh, inebriated while I'm making these deliveries. So how successful was that pilot? And has it put you now on Amazon's radar? Because uh, I, would, I would assume they would probably be very interested in this. Yeah, so, so what happened is, um, I can't mention the name of the insurer, but they are the largest workers' comp insurance provider and over 100 years old in the state of Colorado. What happened, George, is they took our sober check device, they analyzed it for two weeks with their innovation team, and they came back with a thumbs up. We also have, which we'll talk about a little later, a band device with the same technology, but it'll be in a wristband. And they took that technology and they reviewed it for two weeks and came back with thumbs up and said, we have an idea. We'd like to bring you into one of our customers that is an Amazon DSP partner, delivery service partner. And just keep, we got, just to further inform the audience here, the Agoracom audience, Amazon outsources the liability. They outsource everything to these delivery service partners, but they are, they represent Amazon. So what we did is we went into a partner that was having some difficulty and they had a, a large number of claims. We went in and we put the device in from mid-December to late January. And what we we're able to find out is we found three drivers over that six plus week period that were going in to get their vehicle keys with alcohol in their system. What happened is those drivers were sidelined. And the roads were safe because they didn't get in that vehicle. And yeah, now we're taking time bombs. It, it, was, it was an incredible outcome. And what we're doing now is we're in conversations with that insurer to use our device in companies that have significant safety issues. They may not save money, George, but they'll be able to prove their worth over a period of time and, and their costs will be, will be reduced in the future because their claims will go away. So we're in conversations with that insurer, and we'll be in conversations with Amazon sometime by the end of the second quarter. But it's super exciting because we now have a white paper and we have a path. Man, it must be great uh, to, to be the tip of the spear of a company that's on the cusp of creating a new industry, like you said, create great shareholder value, but know you're pro providing fantastic societal benefit at the same time. Yeah, we're excited. I mean, we want to make a difference. That Myself and the management team, we've been uh, doing this for quite a while. And we, we saw SoberSafe as a way for us to step in the market and impact the country from a social perspective. So we can talk a little bit about the sober check, but our technology travels. So the next product we'll have in, in July of this year will be the sober band. 
and it's called the Sober Sure. And what we'll be doing there is we'll be selling that ban to parents of teen drivers so they make sure they'll be alcohol free when they're driving the family car or their car. And again, if you look at discounts, safe driving discounts in the U.S. provided by Geico, Nationwide, State Farm, this product ties into that. So for us, all, all roads lead to insurance and insurance discounting. And with the goal of in the future, the insurers mandating our technology to improve the safety and reduce costs of insurance. So how does, explain to us if you can, because we kind of saw the video on how the touch base one works and that kind of showed us a bit of a demo there. How does the band work? And so is my, is one of my sons, my teenage sons wearing this full time? Uh, and does it, ping back to an app. How does that work? Sure. And, and then I want to talk about revenue model, both on the, on the B2B side and on the band side. Sure. So uh, the band connects to an app. You download our application and the application goes to the phone. The band talks to the phone. And then that phone talks to the master agent. And this would be the parent. So you can make, George, the parent makes a decision on how they want to leverage that band. So let's say your son wants to go to a party on a Friday night. You put the band on your son when he gets in the car, it registers. You show that your son has the band on. And for that duration that you make the decision on, we'll monitor that your, your son to make sure our key is alcohol free. And if there is alcohol in his system, it's not a BAC device. It's just the detection of alcohol in your system. It would send a signal to you and you could make the appropriate decision on how you want to do that. So that band will sell for a specific price. We've got, we've got a number, but we're, we're going through some focus groups over the next couple of weeks to lock down, but that'll be a one-time a one -time price for the band and a monthly cost. This Everything we're doing is software as a service, so we're a SaaS model. So the band will be a one-time fee plus a monthly fee. And then for the sober check device, it'll be $30 a month per user or a dollar a day. For the business side now for George Com Transport or Last Mile Transport, yeah. okay? With the sober check device that's stationary, the, 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 the equipment is part of the, 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 the SAS model and you pay a dollar a day for safety or $30 a month per employee. And there's a, there's a long-term contract with that because again, it ties into insurance savings. If your insurance savings is based on installing our device, if you remove our device, you remove uh, the discount. So it's a very sticky, low churn revenue stream we expect to have. Well, look, for that massive customer you're talking about, if your cost to install and monitor and do, run your service is $80,000 a year, but I'm saving $230,000 a year, uh, that's that's one of the best, that's the best investment any uh, Wall Street would be jealous of making a 4X return uh, on their money. Everybody in the world would be. Yeah, and also, just as a, a footnote, if you think about where the U.S. economy is headed, will there, will there not be a recession? This product has the strength to get through something like that with businesses because they right. will be saving money. It will right. not be additional costs. It will lower costs, improve safety, and protect against future claims. So it's a it's a triple win, win, win. Dave, you know, the big news here is that you're now listed on the NASDAQ. How important is that for the company outside of the obvious, which is, you know, raising a significant amount of money? Uh, how important is it for the company to be on NASDAQ as a further sign of stability and credibility to potential customers? Yeah, I think I think you just nailed it there, George. I mean, uh, the capital gives us the ability to unleash the business plan and attack the market. And the uplisting gives us the ability to move up this, the chain with larger customers and more significant customers. And one thing we didn't talk about, George, which is licensing and distribution. One of our strategies, which I will specifically manage in the first six months after we, uh, now that we've been uplisted, is partnering with companies outside of our footprint or they're in different market segments to add our technology or to license our technology. And we are in discussions with several companies right wow. now. But again, this will give us the credibility to walk in the door and say, you know, we can match with these other companies. So and I guess we're excited about it. Does that apply geographically, Dave? Because yeah. you've got all of North American market to try and conquer. That's an entire elephant that you want to consume. So Europe, Asia, are you also talking about potential territorial licensing going on? So these conversations that we are having are in uh, Canada. They're in uh, Ireland and the UK right now. But again, we've got to 
We've got to throttle that as we our focus is to get the devices in the market in the U.S. and create success. But now that we'll have one, now that we have the credibility of Nasdaq, we'll be able to reach out. So this would be this is a global problem. So we're talking to companies outside the U.S. right now. This technology, I mean, we're the first in the market, and there's nothing like it. There'll be competitors in the future. There, there's got to be, but this will allow us to expand way outside the U.S. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the IP behind your technology. Is it patented, protected, or can I go reverse engineer it and start marketing it in Canada or Greece? Because I'm Greek yeah. So we love Greece, George, Greece and Italy. But but so we've got uh, two patents: one for the stationary device, the Sober Check, and one for the Sober Sure. And we've got significant documentation around our IP. And what our secret sauce, George, is. One, the sensor, the alcohol sensor, which we have an exclusive on. We co-developed that with a company in the States. And the second is the algorithm that ingests that signal and makes the determination on when we flag alcohol or not. So we've got, we've got a, a pretty good brick wall around our patent, and we're doing things to protect that on every 12 months. But we're patented. And in terms of reverse engineering, I mean, we're the first in the market. We're the first with the insurers. We can't protect against that, but we feel we've got a very good brick wall around our patent and around our yeah, IP. Yeah, look, so as long as you have that, you're always going to have someone try and reverse engineer. It all comes down to patenting. And by the way, that almost has to be a completely separate conversation uh, because that technology, and we haven't had a chance to talk about it, I think we should save it for another interview, but the technology is simply amazing, right? Because up till now, we're used to, you know, blowing into a device and it's got this big uh, device with it that, you know, you see the meter going back and forth and all that. But you know the how you know how great is your technology just to be able to use a couple of fingers or now a band, you know uh, to to uh, you know or for, no let me not ask you how great is it but how reliable is it you know when you guys run your tests obviously it is because you got a lot of great uh, results but how reliable is it for everyone at home yeah so let me back up a little bit just do a quick comparison for your your audience on on the sober check versus the breathalyzer so first you know we're, we. We our, our throughput per device is about 180 employees per hour. The breathalyzer is less than 60. That's that's part one. Part two, we're extremely hygienic because you're touching fingers versus blowing into a, vi a device. Yeah. And third, you've got a situation where we've got all this data that we've developed that go into a dashboard for our customer, and there's really no data with a blow device. So. For those, those examples or those differentiators, the blow device today couldn't even be part of the insurance discount because it doesn't have the data attributes and it's just too cumbersome and too time consuming. So that's, that's the first part. Our accuracy to date, and it's all based around the algorithms, we're about 93% accurate on determining alcohol. But keep in mind, we are between the employer and the employees. So we're not the judge and jury, as you mentioned earlier. Right. All we're doing is we're bringing these individuals up and then whatever testing occurs by the company, whether it's a blood test a year, whatever that might be, then they that takes over, but all we're doing is flagging. So there's nothing like us in the market today. We're the first in the market with a massive clear lane to gather customers and generate revenue and grow the business. You know, going down the road, do you see one side or the other being bigger, whether it's the touch or the band? You know, or, or do you think they equally could just be massive parts of uh, one big company? Well, I mean, I think that there'll be significant contribution based on the distribution strategy for the, the sober check box. But think about this. I mean, we've got we'll have we've got a significant digital campaign around the band for the B2C space. And we'll be driving uh, we'll be driving buyers to a website and they'll be making a decision. So it's a much easier uh, sales process. It's a much easier uh, turn on process for us. So we'll see where it goes, but we've got significant data that tells us we'll be really successful. And by the way, we're chasing in the U.S. 15 million parents of these of these youth drivers. So we, we expect that to be significant, but again, too early to tell, but obviously that would yep. be the easiest ship, 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 ship and, and create in, you know, create billing. So we'll see what happens too early to tell. Yeah, but I would imagine there might be some significant crossover because if I'm an employee at uh, ABC Widgets and I keep using this technology every day, sooner or later, I'm going to take a look at it and realize, hey, there's a there's a consumer version of this for my family or for my kids or for whoever whoever I need to uh, uh, I, I need to measure on this. So, Dave, congratulations on the uplist. Congratulations on already being in revenue. 
Uh, I mean, you guys are doing so many things right. It doesn't mean the company's perfect. I'm sure you guys have your challenges like every growing company out there. But right now, it seems like you guys are, are kind of unstoppable. We wish you fantastic success and can't wait to have you back because I got a feeling we're going to be talking a lot as you hit different milestones, big customer acquisitions. Do you expect 2022 to be a big year for SoberSafe? Yes, 22, we, we've raised you know $8 million to date to launch the product that we have right now. And this capital will be used is you is being used to grow this business. So we expect to be in in full trajectory by the you know the end of the third quarter or by by the July time frame. And I think you know good things will happen because we'll have hands and feet on deck. And uh, we're lo really looking forward to creating some success here. So we're excited, and uh, you know the world's right ahead in front of us. So we're excited about getting it done. Well, Dave, congratulations to you. Congratulations to your team because obviously you're the CEO of a great team, and you guys have got a highly accomplished team there. By the way, who's done. Uh, has had major success in the past. So on the balance of probabilities, you know, you guys, you guys have a bright future, but thanks for joining us and can't wait to have you back. Thanks. We look forward and, and thanks to all those at Agoracom. Appreciate it. For those who've been watching or listen by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform to David Gandini, CEO of SoberSafe, trades of the stock symbol S-O-B-R. And you want to do your due diligence, two ways to do that. First, Get to the company's profile page in Agoracom because look, it's brand new technology. It's a brand new market. These guys are making, you know, they're really making headway here. So you want to get that good thousand foot overview on the profile page. We've got some videos up there for you to watch to help you watch the product in action. Once you've got, once you've got that base of information and knowledge and you want to do your deep dive due diligence, head over to the company's website, SoberSafe.com, do your deep dive due diligence. And hopefully today you discovered your next amazing small cap company. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, this video is over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our channel and never missing another great Agoracom small cap video.